Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're viewing this. I am so excited to share some Canva designs and some Canva 101 basics with everyone today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tracy Cox. I am a cause entrepreneur with One Hope Wine, uh, just like you are. So I discovered Canva a couple of years ago, actually, and I have I do not have a background in design. I do not have a background in, in creating this stuff. I learned it all kind of by myself uh, through Canva. And you can too, because literally I love, 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 love this program. Um, and that's why I want you all to be able to use Canva to create your designs, whether it is for your one home business, another direct sales business that you're in, or any business that you're in, um, because really, once you know some of the basics in Canva, you are going to just excel and you're going to be creating these awesome things. But before you're going to jump in to creating something, you kind of have to have a little guideline of like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? All of that fun stuff, right? So really identify whether you're doing a social media post, whether you're you know, creating a, a flyer that's going to go in the mail. I was looking at my desk to see if I had a flyer handy. Um, uh, even a Christmas card, right? Like we've probably all designed a Christmas card at some point in time. What exact like images do we want to use like on the Christmas card? Um, that's kind of what you're going to want to do when you're designing something for on Canva as well. What do you want your audience to remember? So we all know that one hope is our product that we share. We're all sharing wine and spreading hope. But we want the people also to remember that we are the person that they need to purchase that from. So you want to make sure that you identify yourself and why somebody would buy from you versus uh, Marie or Dave or Amy or Tracy or anything like that. What's going to connect you? So that's kind of just like a little also to like kind of social media 101. Like how are you connecting with your audience? Um, and I'm saying that because audience can mean social media. It also can be email marketing as well. So if you're not doing email marketing, I do have an email marketing program that I love that maybe some of you already received my emails as well, but it's super easy to use. I love it too. So I'm going to share that uh, just a snippet with you of that. Um, but again, what is it that you're focusing on and make sure that people identify with you and not just go straight to one hope. So whenever you're designing, start with the end in mind. Um, you can see the little post right there. Um, literally, look what you do too. Like when you look at a post, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, an email marketing campaign, where do you go to first and what do you like and what do you, what captures your attention? Because that's what's also going to capture your audience's attention too. Um, probably since the invention of Twitter and everything was 140 characters way back in the day, people have short attention spans. People are not going to read a paragraph of stuff. I get stuff, you probably all get this too from like your, uh, your, uh, your insurance carrier. Do you ever read this? Probably not. I probably skim it and I read the bulleted points. That's the same thing. It's even more so like social media or email marketing that you're doing. If you write a long paragraph, no one's going to read it. I also work at a school. I try to share this with our principal. I was like, no one's going to read that paragraph. There's a lot of information in there, but if we can bullet point it, it's going to be so much better because our eyes are getting used to being going boom, 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 boom. So this picture is like the perfect example. You're going to see what's on the picture first. If there's a picture in your post, then they're going to read underneath it, then the next one, and then they're going to read what it's about. So it kind of has to go in that little correlation. So if you keep that in mind, that really helps people um, when you're designing where you're going to focus your information on. Also, uh, limit your words on your picture. So I have this one here that just says celebrate and this one, you know, has a lot more words on it, but what, which one draws your eye first, which one doesn't, if you're doing stuff that has, um, I know for some of us recruiting is a big thing. So there is a, a, I think a screenshot that somebody did and it was like, 
had a lot of words on it from like One Hope or they designed it themselves. And there's like five different things. And I've seen this with multiple people on other network marketing too. Um, it's like, take each one of those things and put each one of those things on its own picture. So someone could slide through it in a carousel post on Instagram instead of having everything on one picture because nobody's going to read it. First of all, would you read it? And does, can you read it on your, on your phone? Because our phone screens are so small. Even if you have a big phone, are you reading that content? So just make sure you don't overload any of your um, designs with pictures or with text. Um, make sure you use clean formatting ensure ample negative space. It's okay to have, this is called negative space all around here. There's nothing here. It, that's amazing. Like I'm more drawn to a design that has the negative space than I am one with all the stuff in it because it's too much going on. I don't know if you can do like a little show of hands on your, uh, on your thing and be like, yep, I, I like the, I like the negative space. <laughs> um, but again, what is it that you like about other posts and how can you make yours look like them? And keep it simple. Really less is less more effective. It's completely more effective to have less words, less pictures and an easy thing. And also remember you are your most important product. If you don't show you in a photo, if you don't show you ever having your product, your wine, wearing, you know, the t-shirt you design, whatever it may be, um, why would people wanna connect with you, right? That's, that's part, of, part of the thing too. So you are your most important product. Um, also just to you know, reiterate our major steps of branding yourself is share, 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 then sell. Share, 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 then sell. Um, there's a ton of network marketing gurus out there and groups to join. Um, a couple of them are, I think it's called the Direct Sales Growth Networking. It's Colleen. I always post it in my team page. I can post it on this page too when we're done. Um, she has some great information too, just to kind of keep you tracked on how you are and how you should be as like a network marketer. Um, and again, it's all about sharing, 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 selling, and bringing value to your customers. So throw in some wine education, throw in some wine pairings. Recipes are huge. Everybody loves recipes. Um, and we'll go through some of that, how to make that stuff today and how to use what One Hope has already provided for you and just adding your name to it too. Um, that's like the easiest thing to do ever. Um, also for all of us, I highly recommend investing in some business tools. So I use Canva Pro because I don't want to think about, am I clicking on this design? Am I going to have to pay for using this little element? I also use Canva for, I have like three other things that I do. I do um, some marketing and creating graphics for other people. I also do it at the school that I work at. I also do it for myself for here, um, for my One Hope business. So there's a lot of different things. So I don't want to think about it. So I pay, I think it's like $12.99 a month, maybe $19.99 a month, something. I don't know what program I'm on, but it's awesome. I'm also an affiliate with Canva, uh, which is just kind of just like network marketing. So if you were to go to the Bitly upgrade to Canva Pro, I get like a dollar if you sign up or something, something super little, but just so you know that I, if you do go there, I get, um, there's an affiliate connection with that. Also, um, I use Flowdesk for email marketing. So if you use this, I also get a little affiliate fee for this, but you also get a 50% off your Flowdesk subscription. And that's the only way you can get 50% off a Flowdesk subscription is when you have a referral link from somebody. That's just kind of how they built that in. Um, and I'll show you if you haven't received anything from me on Flowdesk, um, I'll show you what that looks like too at the end, because you should not put all your eggs in a social media basket. Do not put all your eggs in a social media basket because how many people were like a couple weeks ago, it was like Instagram and Facebook were both like crashed and you couldn't do anything. And you're like, what do I do now? What do I do? Um, keep all of your customer contacts, keep them. I have little sheets of paper 
that I have my customers fill out at events that I then put into a spreadsheet that I also add them into um, my emails through Flowdesk. So I have them in two places. Yes, if you add them to your contacts in your database through OneHope, they're there, but you don't know if that person's unsubscribing to emails from the corporate office at any time. And it's also good to, again, have that personal connection with people. So I highly recommend that as well. And, and I just am saying this, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to preach or anything like that. It's just like, it's, it's really, really helpful. And I have people that I will send out an email to that haven't been my customers that are like, oh, hey, I really like that recipe. And they'll send me back a note or, oh, I didn't know I could customize a bottle. That's really cool. How could I do that? So even though they've made that one contact with you, it's still nurturing that relationship. So email is a really good way to do that. But let's get designing in Canva, shall we? Um, so if you guys want to, I don't know if you guys want to type in, I'm trying to figure out when I'm sharing this. I can only see like a few of you on the screen at a time. And the gallery goes, but let's see here. So I have a couple different Canva accounts. Whoops, and that's the Facebook group. Hold on. So the one that I'm going to go into first is the free version of the Canva account. So a lot of you have uh, this version. So we're going to work in this free version first. Um, and then I'm going to flip over to my pro version that I have to show you the different the differences of it. And again, you can choose to work in whichever version you feel most comfortable with. You just get a lot more features and accessibility when you have the pro version. Um, and if you're really serious about your business, the $12.99 a month is going to be a no brainer. Plus, if it's a business expense, you can write that off at the end of the year on your taxes. Um, I'm not a tax professional. I want to clarify that. So talk to your tax professional because there is a difference between doing a side hustle um, or doing a side gig, let's call it that, because we don't want anybody to have to hustle. Um, doing a side gig um, and making that like can that be tax deductible? What's tax deductible? What's not? If you don't work with a tax professional, I highly recommend that you find one in your local market, um, contact your local chamber of commerce, or check with people in a, a community Facebook group, um, because it's really enlightening when you work with them, what you can actually write off and stuff to you. And there's been a couple of times that I've had my tax person jump on line with us and do like a little tax talk, because like this room that I'm sitting in, I can write off because this is like, I have all my wine in here. This is where I do all my work. Like I work from home. So this office space I can write off too. So you might be surprised what you can get some uh, tax write-offs on. But when you first sign up for at Canva, and can all of you guys see my screen still? My Canva screen? Okay. Thank you. Um, this is what your homepage will look like. You will pop in here and then you won't have these recent designs unless you've designed something, but you'll be like, okay, great, great. Now, what do I do? It's a blank screen. <laughs> so Canva has really, really come a long ways to, they make this so easy for you. Um, and they're constantly updating and making it like cutting edge as well, which I just love this. You're going to see designs. Once you start scrolling through here, you're going to notice there is so many people that use Canva from your local coffee shops, even one hope uh, their designs that they use, they, they make them in Canva. Cause I can tell that I can see their Canva templates. So it's like, Oh, that's cool. I know where they got that at. So you can do the exact same thing. What I like to start with is again, the beginning, what do I want to create? Do I want to, am I creating a Instagram post? Am I creating a Facebook post? Uh, the good thing too with Canva is that they already have the sizing done for you. So like an Instagram post, the size of that post is different than a Facebook post. It's different than an Instagram story. If you want up here, you can search for templates. So when you just first click in here, it'll say Facebook post. There's this. You can also be like, you know what? I want a post that has to deal with, let's do Valentine's Day because that's coming up soon. So when you type in Valentine's, there's all of this information that pops up too. So let's do an Instagram post for Valentine's Day. So we're just going to click on this. So 
So when you're doing Zoom um, and you're doing it live and recording it, it kind of goes a little slow. So forgive the pauses for a second there. Um, but you can see once you type in Valentine State Instagram posts, like look at all these different post options that come up. Like there is a lot of them. And then this can be overwhelming too, because you're like, oh my gosh, I love all of these. Where do I start? What do I want to do? If you've identified kind of how maybe colors that you want to use for the year, or maybe because it's Valentine's Day, you want to use all pink for like a week or two for posting or whatever, do whatever it is that you want to do on that. We're not going to necessarily dive into like branding and, um, you know, identifying your brand colors or anything today, but that's something that you see like bigger companies do and you see like One Hope's aesthetic. It's nice. It's clean. They're using the same kind of color palettes throughout um, all of their posts and all of their images because it just keeps it consistent and it, they like their, their feed that way. Um, if you were to look at my Instagram feed, you would notice my Instagram feed is kind of like, I don't have a consistency on it. I kind of use like, if you can see that, I kind of use like one color um, teal, but I think I'm changing up my color. Um, again, it's whatever you want to use and how you want to have it, either for Instagram or Facebook. So with this Instagram post, let's just go with something that we can add a photo to. Let's see. Great thing is, let's do, we're not going to do rounded text. That's a little bit. Let's just do this one. Kind of a cute little photo. So when you click on it, it'll say use this template. And then it also gives you different options down here for more like this. So if you're like, oh, I like that, but I don't really like it. Now that I see this one, maybe I want this one instead. Um, again, all you have to do is click use this template and this template will populate onto your page. It's gonna ask if you wanna try Canva Pro. You're gonna say, nope. Oh, actually, you know what it's not. So I'm so used to using Canva Pro. So this one actually has, since it has this little crown here next to it, it is only available for Canva Pro people. So depending on what you have, you might not be able to do it. Pro, see how it says Pro Pro. Let's see if we can find some free graphics here. There's a lot of free graphics. I probably just, okay, we'll do this one. And then this one says, customize this template. So this one is not very uh, Valentine's Day, but we'll figure out a little Valentine's Day to put on here. Because let's make it, a uh, because we're still in dry January, let's do like a little dry January. So once you pop up a template, you can see how I'm moving my cursor and all these little blue blocks are around going around. So this is for the wording. It's like a text block. If you've ever used uh, PowerPoint or even Microsoft Word with a text point, that's on here. So once you click on it, you can edit the information in here. And then you can just type whatever you'd like to put in here. Um, since it's not Christmas, we might get rid of these. Um, anytime that this little blue line is around an image, you can drag the image by dragging on one of the round parts, or you can stretch it this way out of the frame. It kind of crops it a little bit in there. Um, we're just going to delete that one, and we're also going to delete this little duck. Now we're going to be like, oh, let's see, what is our... Um, January, well, let's say ends. Ends January, how many days are in January? January 31st. Add to cart now. So now you're like, oh, but I wanna put some pictures of a, a wine in here. Like, where am I gonna get these pictures of wine and how am I going to put them into my Canva account? So the best place to ever look for pictures for One Hope if you're using One Hope corporate pictures is either the Vine 
or the website. Always, always check the website to see what wines we have in stock. Um, there was a person who posted the other day some really cute stuff for um, Valentine's Day using the rosé, but the one rosé that picture that she chose is out of stock. So make sure that whatever you have is in stock. It's on your One Hope website. Go here and check it out. Um, or if you're using it for any other kind of um, you know, business, make sure that it's a current image. All of your current images are on the website. Literally, this is like your best place to go to check, to be like, do we have that in stock? Do we still have this? What does that bottle of wine look like? Make sure that you're using current images because that way it's relatable. Um, if you're using a bottle from four years ago and someone goes to the website, they're like, that's not even on here. Like that's, that's not here. Like <laughs> it's a completely different product. So make sure you're using current images. Um, what I like to do is just go into my, you know, One Hope account, um, and then I click save image. And so I'll just save my image as rosé. Oh, and yeah, we'll replace it. I probably have a million rosé things saved because I've been around the block here for a while. Um, same with in the vine, like any of these images that are in here, I like to just go and, you know, right click on it and save the image. And then when you go into back to your Canva template, over here on the right hand side, um, these are the, the templates, elements, I'll show you what those are in a minute, and then uploads. So this is where you will upload any pictures or videos. And if you have them on your desktop, like I have them down here in my little toolbar, I can just drag and drop them in here. Or you can click upload media and you can get the media from your desktop on here. You can get the media from wherever you have your media saved. And depending on how your account is, I know with my other one, I can get it from um, like my Google Drive and stuff too. I don't know if I can do that with this one or not, but so let's put a, this picture on here. So let's say we're going to talk about our rosé. And I'm going to show this for two different reasons, because I'm going to show you why you would want to use a background remover and why you wouldn't want to use a background remover. And this is hands down. The one reason that I love Canva Pro is because the background remover is on there and it makes a huge difference in what you design. So if I click and put this picture on here, and you can format even a picture with like the white around it to make it look good. So it can be like, oh yeah, this doesn't look too bad, right? But let's say you were adding multiple different kinds of, of wine in here and I don't have any on this page, but I'm gonna switch over to my Canva. Let's see, I'm just gonna do a new page on here. I'm going to do a template. I'm going to do I'm just going to pop this in so you can see. I'm going to upload that same picture so you can see what it would look like if I used. You can see I have a, a million pictures in here too. So if I was putting this picture in here, like, oh, I may not like that as well, but with the background remover, I can go to edit image, remove this background, takes a little bit, thinks about it, and boom. Now there's not that white box around there, which makes it much easier and better for your designing because you can put this kind of anywhere you want it. 
Canva also gives you all these little hints and tips too along the way. So this is like one reason that I love the Canva, the Canva Pro because you can remove that background. If you also wanted to put a picture inside, like this is a picture, you can just drag and drop a picture in there and it kind of formats it for you as well in that little area if you're using one that already has a pre-designed picture in it. So does that make sense for like how you would remove the background? And I, I know I say that a lot on um, CE image sharing too. I'm like, oh, you should just remove the background on that because there's a lot of people that make a lot of really cool looking graphics, but it would even be cooler and give you elevate that your brand just a little bit if you just had that background removed. Um, and there could be a way that we can save all these photos too so the background is removed. But again, you can tell by designing this too, like there's a lot of thought and a lot of time and a lot of process that goes into this. Um, so that's why it's always great to request stuff, but I also wanna empower you to be able to make the graphic that you want so you're not waiting for somebody else to create it, put it in, you know, the CE image sharing group, but it may not be to what your aesthetic is. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, around your aesthetic. Um, I also suggest always like making sure you add your, your name onto the image. type so slow sometimes. Um, so that way too, and remember like you're called a cause entrepreneur because that's what we're referred to as on our website. So definitely, you know, stick with that same, same language. So at least if someone sees this, they identify that as well. Now, if you love this design right now and you want to download it and save it, you just come up here to click download. It'll give you different download options. You can do it as a PNG. Uh, most of you, everybody will probably just do it as a JPEG, which is a smaller size um, image file, which is perfect for any of your social media. And even if you pop it into like a Flowdesk or a MailChimp or something like that. Uh, PDF is, if you're creating a flyer, I always suggest PDFs because then that way two people can print them out. Um, or if you're going to print them out at a local printer, um, PDFs, PDF print is actually like a high quality that you want to do. Um, you can also create GIFs in Canva. But once you have your image file type, you just click that. Uh, you can, and then you just click download. So if I was using Canva Pro, I would be able to size my option. I would also be able to choose my quality of my file that I'm downloading. Um, but otherwise, I can do a download. Now, another thing about, good thing about Canva Pro, I feel like I'm just like hawking Canva Pro and that was not my intention at all, but I realize using this free version of this, how limited it kind of can be. <laughs> Cause I literally just created this account this morning so I could show you what to do. Cause I'm like, uh, most of them probably don't have Canva Pro. But if you do have Canva Pro, you can also schedule this right to your social media platforms right from Canva. So um, that's a, pretty amazing feature too. So you could create this, you could be like, oh, I want to schedule this for Thursday. So let me put this in my content calendar to schedule this for Thursday to go out. Sometimes pre-planning ahead of time is so easy, especially if you're going to be on vacation, but you still want to make sure like there's something relevant going on. Um, you can use the Canva planner. Um, also, you have, if you have a business page on Facebook, you can do Facebook and Instagram right from your business page to go to both and there's a planner and a calendar creator and that also gives you a lot of tools for what is like the national day like is it taco day is it uh you know hug your animal day that has that kind of information on there now too um but if you're going to download it then you just click download and it will download to your computer and save wherever you want to save it if you want to I'm not going to save this one if you want to share this design, I recommend when you click share, there is an option right here, use as a template. If you're posting anything in the CE image sharing page or sharing with even team members, always use a template. Because if you use an edit file and 
Marie goes in and edits my file and puts her name on it, or she deletes something, or she moves it all around, um, or she creates a whole new design from this design, then that first design is ruined. So if you use a template, then it's your design and you could do whatever you want with it and it doesn't mess up the original design. So definitely um, share it as a template. If you're creating something in Canva and you just want somebody to view it, um, for instance, that presentation, or I've created some different flyers in here for people um, and I just send them share a link to view. Um, so I do that a lot because I also have people approve graphics for uh, another company that I work for. So I'll be like, here's a bunch of graphics. Here's the link to view. Which flyer do you like best of these options? So I do that or I can do it um, if I'm sending it to a customer and be like, oh, here you go. Here's some information on X, Y, Z and they can just view it. So I and didn't download it as a PDF or anything. They could just view it right from my, my Canva files. And it looks like it's like on the website. Um, another thing with uh, Canva Pro is that you can actually publish it to a website. You get like a little website address. So you can be like, oh, here's information. And then it's just kind of published as a website. So it looks like they're scrolling through a website. So that's kind of cool too for Canva Pro. Um, let's see what else is on here too. Does anybody have any questions so far? Easy peasy, right? Like you just are like, all right, I got, I got this. This is easy. <laughs> um, again, it's really hard to see everybody on, on here. And if you do have a question or you want to know something specific, feel, you can unmute yourself and just ask to like, go ahead. So let's say you're like, oh, you know what? I like this design, but I'm not really sure I love this design. If you click this little plus sign right here, or sometimes depending on how your screen is formatted, so my screen formatted kind of funky here, um, up here in the right-hand corner, this will be add a page, or you can duplicate that page. So let's say you like this and you want to put a line on every single page, you can go, you can duplicate that page. So there you see we have page one, page two. So the first one we're gonna do rosé, this one we're gonna do a, another kind of wine. So we're gonna drag and drop this photo just right over here and it'll just pop it right in, which is kind of cool too, because it, then it keeps your same sizing, all of your same information is there. And then you can do that again and hit Ooh, let's duplicate that again. Oh, that just duplicated just the image. So let's say you want two images on there. You can just click this little button to duplicate the image. And then you can delete it. Anytime that this is highlighted with the little, little circles and the little lines, you can, now you're in control of just this, this option of whatever's in that square. If you want to change the fonts, which fonts are another big reason to use Canva Pro, because um, you get a lot more fonts options, but you can go in here and you don't have to highlight the whole thing. You can just click on it, click up here to where it says fonts, and then you'll see all the different font options. So anything again with the little crown next to it is a Canva Pro option. Um, there are a lot of good options for uh, the basic version as well. And you can change this around. I would suggest to not using too many different fonts. And again, remember, what is it that you want to have them stand out first? Um, that will really help you plan this too. So I would just turn this back to um, the regular font that it was on. And you can also undo by clicking the little arrow button up here. And it'll take you through. You're like, oh, I didn't really mean to do that. Let's change all this around. So there you go. Now we're back to where we were. Can undo for a while. Undo comes in super handy a lot of the time. Um, if you wanted to edit this image, you could crop it. And you're like, I want to just have just this back. I'm not even sure what wine that is on this page. Once this is highlighted, 
you can see how here's the square that you can see the information in. This is all shaded. But if you drag these little parts out and then click and drag this, you can get just that bottle in there. And now that will be the part that shows on your image. So a lot of it is using your mouse. Um, I also really recommend using Canva on a computer if you're going to be creating a design kind of from scratch and not just a drag and drop a photo in there into a pre-existing template. You can do it on your phone or uh, your iPad or a tablet. Um, I just find I have more control over stuff that I do when I'm using it on my computer. What I do like to do though is have it on my computer, then I log into the Canva app on my phone, the Canva app, and then I'll download the information on my phone so then I can upload it to Instagram or Facebook right from my phone and I have it right here. Or I just have it on my phone so I can send it off in a text message because if I create this, I might wanna text some of my customers like, hey, you know what? We have uh, a dry January sale. Here's some information on it and put it in a text message to send to them. Um, hey, Tracy. Uh-huh, David. Uh, quick question. Is there a way to put a hyperlink to the wine, like in the embedded in the actual image? So that like if they click on the image, it takes them to my web page for that wine. That is an awesome question. So just to repeat that so everybody heard it, David wants to know if there's a way that you can embed a hyper hyperlink or the link to your website in an image. In an image, no. In a PDF, yes. So if you were creating a PDF through here, you can. Um, but if it's going to be an image that you're just posting on any social media site, as you know from any social media site, um, you can't click the image to go to a website unless it's linked that way through which is normally like a Facebook ad if it's linked that way. So the only way that your, your, your URL, that was a lot to say in one, one sentence, uh, gets shared is if you actually put it on your image or you okay. have it in the, the comment section of uh, either Instagram or um, Facebook. And with Instagram okay. too, you can have one clickable link in your bio for those of you who are Instagram people. Um, a lot of people use what's called a link tree. I have a link tree account. So I'll just say, you know, people say shop the bio. So if you go to link tree, link tree is totally free. Um, you can have a couple different options on there. So my link tree has I say shop the wine. I have some information on nonprofit fundraising. I have, you want to join the team and I have, do you want to host? So some of these that I have, and I encourage all of you to go check it out. Um, I am at wine with Tracy on Instagram. If you go to, I think it's NPO fundraising. Um, I think it's that one that takes you over to my flow desk which actually where I have it set up that if you want to fundraise with wine, you input your information here, click this button, and then I send them a information on how they can fundraise with wine sheet in their email. So they just have it all and then they're on my list. So that's another reason to use um, Flowdesk as well is because you can also create those time flows and that, that workflow so people can get some information from you and then you, you capture their information as well. Um, Thank so you. Too. Yeah, so back to David's original question before I went on my tangent was if you wanted to have this a link and you wanted to have your website linked to this, um, if you're going to save this as a PDF at the end of the day, yes, you can add a link here. If you want to save it as a JPEG, uh, your link won't work and Canva will actually tell you that too. So if I wanted to click I hate it when it does this, it goes so slow. Let's 
So if I wanted to make this shop now, and then I highlighted that up here at the top, um, it'll say link. So you can click on this to put your information in for a link. So I would put in my website. And then click enter. And then if I download this, see it also underlined it. If I download this as a PDF, so I can send this in an email or maybe perhaps I'm gonna use it in an email marketing campaign, then I can, then people will be able to, you know, I would probably say click here to shop now and then they could click that and they would be able to go right to my website. Yeah, make sense? Um, I'm gonna flip over to my other, this Canva for a second here and go back to Thank that. you. You're welcome. So a lot of times too, what we do as um, cause entrepreneurs is we will see stuff posted in our the Facebook group. Um, so hopefully they're all posted as templates so we can use them, but you should be able to bring them into your Canva account and and edit them. So you can tell, this is my normal Canva account that I have, and I have like a lot of different things on here. So here's one that somebody did, um, which was super cute, um, you know, National Spaghetti Day. So they have their information on here, so you can, you know, bring it up and edit it. Um, so once you, once you click on the template link, it opens up in your file. So I already have it in my file, so I can just reopen it. And if I want to keep going with this theme for my, you know, National Spaghetti Day, National Hot Dog Day, National Let's Drink Dessert Wine Day, um, whatever it is, like these are great. And then you can just build upon them. You can keep them all. I recommend keeping them all and just adding a page on and duplicating the page because you're going to use these again next year and you can change the colors, you can change the font, you can change anything to make it your, you know, your branding. Um, same with this. So let's say you just open this from the CE image sharing page and you're like, oh, you know what? I really don't like this yellow color. Let me change that color. Um, so as long as you click on here and you find that little template, sometimes there's a lot of different little icons on here. So like spaghetti day is one different word. National is one word. That's the picture of the spaghetti. Let's say you're gonna, okay, so we're gonna hold on the change in the yellow. Let's say it's now not spaghetti day and it is um, cheesecake day. You can go over to elements. You can search the word cheesecake. And it will pop up a lot of different images of cheesecake for you. So this is one way that you can create your designs. Um, it'll let you know if it's free or if it's pro. So like this one's a free one. So you would be able to find this on the free account. And then you just click on it. Does everybody know how to like drag and drop in your stuff? Um, just kind of drag and drop it in. You can see it's gonna take that picture of where the spaghetti was. Now I wanna crop this because I want the cheesecake to maybe be a little bit more in the middle. So as long as these little things are around the cheesecake, then you can click crop. And then you can just kind of drag it over a little bit. And done. Now I think cheesecake would go really well with Zinfandel, but also maybe I wanna use um, another kind of wine too. So maybe I already have something uploaded for, uh, my wines when you also have pro you can create folders so you can see i have a lot of different folders over here with a lot of different things in them 
Um, most of the time I just keep all my images over here on the left hand side and then I can drag and drop them in. Clearly I was doing a recap video for the school I work for. Um, so that's why all of those little kids are appearing over here. Um, but let's say I was like, oh, you know what? It's gonna go great with this whole entire pack, this little four pack of wine. Cause it's always better to promote more wine than less wine, right? <laughs> let's get those four pack sales. So you could say, and maybe this four pack is on special. So you could say, this is the, um, uh, I don't know. There's one that's called like the sweet pack or something. We'll just pretend that that's what this is called. This is not what this is called, but we're just gonna pretend. Perfect pairing, the sweet pack. And we wanna highlight this wine a little bit more. So again, we're gonna edit the image by clicking the image, clicking edit image. I'm going to actually, if you wanna make the image brighter, you can make the image brighter. You see how it kind of dulls out the wine though? So sometimes too, like even when you take your own photos and bring them in, you can, you know, do a little photo editing in here. You can also choose when you edit the image to do a filter. Um, there's some other tools and some mockups that come with, um, you know, the pro version of it, but there's also like these different tones and stuff too. Um, but we're just going to use the same image. We're going to crop it. So we're going to go back to our crop. We're just going to kind of fill that circle out a little bit more. So just kind of drag. So we have more a little emphasis on the wine and not all the, the white space for that. And then as long as you click, you can barely see that this one is highlighted around the whole back. Um, and up here it tells you there's no, there's no color there. So if you wanted to put a different color, now the whole thing is orange because the black, the black part of it's gone. So it's like, oh, that might be better because that might, you know, it's kind of fun to go in here and click and play around with some colors to be like, oh, you know what, I like that contrast of colors. I like this color. Um, it also will pick up what the photo color is when you have pro. So you can be like, oh, look, this is the same color green that's kind of like right here, um, or it's in the photo. So it's sometimes you want to use the same color tones. Um, I actually kind of liked it when it was all just orange, yellow. I don't know. Um, depending on what your brand is. And now you, since that word national is not there, okay, we got to find that. So if you click on uh, that word and up here along the top is the font, the font size, the font color. So you can click the A to change the font color. So maybe we're going to make this black so we can see that. Depending on what the font is, it'll let you know if you can make it bold or italics. Uh, this little button does the alignment. So maybe you want it all left aligned. Maybe you want it in the middle. Maybe you want it to the right. These little bars around here when we have the text will let you kind of move it. So now this is just the text space instead of all that extra like white around the spacing. I say spacing, so it wasn't really space, but that big space around there. Um, so if you're doing a more complicated design, you can definitely, you know, shrink that down a little bit so you can play with it a little bit better. Also, if you are doing, if you do get pro, you can go into the effects. You can do some shadowing some lifting. You can also make this curved. This is how you get the curved. So if you want to, I'm assuming you spread this out. Again, I hate it when my computer goes so slow when this is open. Okay, well, this is a really bad example. I apologize for that because this is like a little wonky there. Um, so I'm just gonna hit undo, undo, undo on here. And that's the great thing about having an undo button. 
So Rachel um, created these, put these on the CE image sharing page for us. So I would suggest you go in and make sure you change the my shop to you know your shop information. So when this information gets shared, because if this was a recipe, if this was anything else um, that you were like a meme that you create or something, somebody definitely would be like, oh, I'm gonna share this with my friends. You want your name and information to go along with it. So you just click into that text to change it. I'm trying to find this national. So you can see sometimes when you have a lot of text that is, or images right next to each other, like I'm trying to pick up this national back here and I'm having a heck of a time getting it. So I'm probably gonna move spaghetti day up and then see if I can click the national. Uh, I think it's letting me have a national now. I should have never made that. Oops, so we're okay, here's national. Here's another little element. So anytime you hit something like in a little that box appears, there's an element around there somewhere. Okay, now I can finally get national. So now I, I don't want national to be round anymore. So I'm going to go back into my effects and I'm going to take the curve and I'm gonna move it down to zero so it can be straight. Move that up. I'll find spaghetti day, move spaghetti day back down. And then we're gonna change that to national cheesecake day. Move that. And there's, you can barely tell that there's like this little circle around here. So actually, because it is the same color as the background now, and it used to not be, anytime that you have something highlighted up here in the top left, it'll tell you what color it is. So you can always be like, okay, that's highlighted, but I don't see it. Just look up here to see what color it is, because then you can change that color. And then it will appear. So now you can see that there's a little black circle around here. Um, and then you're like, well, it's still not where I want it to be because now it's not on there. So you just have to kind of play with it. Or you can just be like, forget it. I don't need a circle around this. I'm going to delete it and just delete the little circle out of there because you don't necessarily need that. You can be like, all right, let's just delete that, make it easy for ourselves. Um, this one, if you look up here, it has three different colors, that little element. So if you click on one of these colors and then change it to a different color, it'll let you know where that is. So this little element, whoever created this element, see how there's little lines around it that now have appeared. So you can find that as well. You can also see like, oh, what, where does this other one go? Like, let's try a different color and see. And then that fills it in. So there's always different things with the elements that you pop in there as well on, can you change them? Can you not change them? Um, and that's just kind of the fun of like designing and creating. Again, a lot of the things and what I really like to have people really start out with is use a template that's already created because that just makes it easy. And then you just drag and drop drag and drop. There's a lot of those as we saw when we first um, opened up Canva as well. So let's say you want to keep this, we're going to change this to Cheesecake Day. And I just make this a little smaller so it still fits in there. Spread it out. I don't know why this is not want to move up. Here we go. National Cheesecake Day. Okay. And let's say you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to make a couple of these. Why I'm on this? Because that's a lot of times what I like to do too is when I'm designing is like, all right, it's Cheesecake Day. Let me look at the calendar. What's coming up next? Let's duplicate this page. Um, so then the next one, 
see how it made it went from one to two. So now it's going to be a national pizza day just because I'm getting hungry and I think I want pizza. Um, oops. Or you can look for cheesecake pizza. Uh, a really good one too is, I'll show you this in a second too. So we're gonna say pizza. You can drag and drop that piece of pizza in there. If it has this blue sky, that means the image is not in there right now. So some images that you create will have that little blue sky if you delete that. Um, let's say on here that we're just gonna do wine. The great thing too about Canva, uh, free or pro, there are a ton of images to choose from. So again, even though we're focused on One Hope, sometimes too, you don't always have to have a picture of One Hope bottle on there. You don't have to have you don't have to have the One Hope logo on here. You don't have to always link everything back to One Hope. Make sure it drives traffic back to your site. Um, that's why a lot of people are like, oh, can I have this? Can you put um, a One Hope logo on here? And it's like, it doesn't have to have that. And especially to like, just pay attention to what the company is putting out. If the company is not putting out a meme that sounds mean, maybe you shouldn't put their logo on it because you know, again, that logo then identifies that brand. So you gotta be careful of the brand as well. Um, so let's just say, maybe you wanna just have a glass of wine. Again, you can just drag and drop a glass of wine on here. And there you have some wine and just put like perfect pairing, any wine. Um, I think there was, and then if you want to save this, you know, obviously it's automatically saving as you go along up here at the left, it'll tell you all changes saved. You can click save if you need to. Another fantastic reason to get a uh, pro. And again, I didn't come into this to talk about pro, but I'm really realizing how amazing it is. I resize all of my images. So on the basic personal plan, you are not able to just resize it easily. Um, I go from, let me see, I did this one the other day. So uh, the school that I work at after Christmas, we always like to host a regifting. So people always get stuff that they don't need or they don't want. So it's like, well, donate it to the school because we'll use it in a silent auction or, you know, create like little auction baskets with it. So I created an Instagram story. So somebody had asked to on the CE image sharing page, why you would want to use Canva for Instagram story, how you can do that. There's a ton of Instagram story templates. Um, it's also fun to put your information into an Instagram story. So this was a template that I crafted for our school. Then when you put it in stories, you can add little stickers, you can add your shop link in there. There's a lot of different things that you can do on Instagram now that you couldn't do before. And that's also kind of a really easy way to edit things. If you haven't edited or you just wanna put your name on something, put it in either Facebook stories or Instagram stories, add your name on it, do a screenshot of it, um, and then you can like repost it too. So use that as an editing tool because that also makes it really easy. So what I did for this one is this is a Instagram story. So I walked through like the whole cycle so they would be able to click through it. So I just made all my thing like, hey, you know, regifting is the new recycle. Uh, you know, receive a gift you already have. Did Amazon say keep it instead of return it? Because yeah, that does happen. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Um, you know, I, I did this whole list of stuff. But then it's like, oh, okay, well, this is great for my Instagram story, but now I want to change this so it can be an Instagram post. Um, Instagram post, there's just the one post, and then you can post up to 10 different images, and that's called a carousel. So that keeps people active on your Instagram page and keeps going through. Another little user tip about Instagram, uh, the carousels, if you have 10 photos and they only get through three of them, 
they're still going to be kept serving your your post until they swipe through all the rest of those pictures too. So it's always good to have more than one or two, and it kind of takes them along a story to be like, oh, hey, what pizza goes with wine? What pizza or what wine goes with pizza? <laughs> you know, like you can take them through a couple different ones and do different options. Um, but anyway, back to resizing. When you have the Canva Pro, you can resize. So if I want to change this now from this is an Instagram story, but I want to change it to an Instagram post. All I have to do is click Instagram post and I can copy and resize this or I can click resize and it'll resize it in here. Since I'm going to keep the same story so I can continue to use it again, although I think I have it downloaded on my phone, but I always like to keep things just in case because you never know when you're going to reuse something or not again. Um, so I'm going to click copy and resize. It'll open a new, a new little workspace for me, and it has resized my images now to the size that's appropriate for an Instagram post. So Instagram posts and Facebook posts, there's just a little bit of a difference in the sizing of them. For an Instagram post, it's a little smaller, um, and Facebook post is a little wider. So I often like to design something in an Instagram post because then if I put it on Facebook, um, Facebook will just have the edges kind of blurred and kind of, you can see that other color there. So if this is green, it would be green on the side of this if I don't resize it for an Instagram post. So this just automatically resized my whole entire, everything that I have on there. So I can use this now for my Instagram post. I would actually go into this and probably, if this is gonna be my main page, which it would be my first page, I would probably make all this stuff a little bit bigger. Um, so I have another little tip is I have this little wording and then I have this little box around it. Um, if you hold, if you have this one highlighted and you hold down the shift key and then you highlight the next one next to it, and then you go up to the top and you click group, it's going to group those two things together. And now that is one object instead of two. So I don't have to move two separate things. I can now drag this down and it'll all go together at once. And I can make it larger all at once too. This one I don't need to have larger though. I just want to have that small. So sometimes when you use the text that is already pre-formatted for you under the text section, uh, they, they are grouped together. So you also can go up and click ungroup and then that separates them again. So sometimes if there's something and you're like, I don't understand why I can't get that word or why I can't get that object, it might be because it's grouped together. Um, and a lot of it's kind of, you know, a little of this is like trial and error. So you could be like, oh, where am I going? What am I doing? Um, I definitely encourage you just to go in here and play with Canva because the more you play around with it, um, you know, like anything, the more you're going to be able to really be like, oh, okay, I got this or I got this for what I need it for. Um, Again, you can make yourself into a graphic designer by doing this. If you don't have that capacity and you don't want to do that, that's fine. There are those of us that love to do this. So, you know, we do share a lot of images and stuff on the CE image sharing page. Um, I do, I've helped a couple of people create their own flyers and stuff as well. Um, so I know there's a few of us in the group that do this as a little side gig as well too. So if you ever need help or anything like that, um, let us know. Um, that's again why I'm trying to teach this little class just to empower you to help you do things that you need to do for yourself and to elevate your brand um, within, you know, One Hope or whatever business that you may be in because it doesn't have to be One Hope specific either. So you can tell I use this for other companies. Um, 
So those are kind of like the basics and the basic overview. Oh, before I do this too, uh, if you have any customers that are going to etch a crate, I use this for crate etching as well. Uh, let's see, I just have where to go. So I have a friend who is opening up her own bodywork studio. Um, so I'm going to send her a crate with a bottle of uh, sparkling in it to say congratulations on branching out on your own. So any of the, you know, the etchings, um, any of the bottle etchings, I design all the stuff in here as well. So I have a standard template that I use um, with the wording. Anything that you're doing for that too should be clean, clear, crisp. I use well, a template size that's over here. So you, that's why you see all these infographics. Um, but this, I also have a few of these on the CE image sharing page. So you can be able to bring them in as a template and design your own crates and stuff on there too. And it's kind of fun too, for us to have like our own little crates that we showcase um, at events um, too, because people really are like, oh, hey, I didn't know I could do that. Like, that's really cool. And customizing your crate is a cool way to customize stuff and to have your own personalization on it as well. So are there any questions, anything you want me to go over, anything that you are like, hey, how can I do that? I did some very basic stuff today. Um, and here's another one that was in CE image sharing that I opened and brought into my um, Canva account. And I'm not sure why it's not opening. Uh, Tracy, I think we wanted to know your um, Instagram name again. Oh, sure. Oh, I didn't even look at the chat. Sorry. I totally didn't even look. Um, let's see. My Instagram is at wine with Tracy. I popped it up there. Oh, let's see. So see if there's anything. Yeah. So yes, this was recorded. Um, I have a couple different messages and stuff on here. I'll go through these in a minute too. Um, and see, whoops, I have an electronic voucher with American Airlines apparently. Awesome. <laughs> Tracy, I wanted to just thank you. Um, I've gotten familiar with Canva and a lot of it's due to your help and your templates. Um, but you definitely sold me on the pro. <laughs> I think it would be worthwhile investment because I, especially like, you know, getting rid of backgrounds and stuff that it's so time consuming. So I just wanted to say thank you and thank you for the books and everything you put together. Um, it's been really helpful. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. If anybody needs some corporate gifting books, I found a couple more in my uh, basement too. My basement. Did they come out? Do you know if they came out with the new 2021 impact book yet? Or uh, they have not come out with they have not come out with the 2021 impact book yet. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um. So what Amy was saying too is that so I took the corporate gifting booklet, which I don't have any up here, um, and I actually took the PDF from the corporate office, put it into a file in Canva. So actually, when I send that out to my customers, it has my name on every page too. Um, there's so many different things that you can do. And once you have the pro version, you can do a lot of that as well. Um, and again, I did not come on here to preach pro, but clearly that's what this came out to be because there really is a big difference in, in using it. Um, and I'm trying to get this flyer to open. And for some reason it is not opening on my computer and I do not know why. Um, Another really good thing um, that I want to say is, so we also do flyers. So there's a lot of flyers. The real estate industry does a lot of flyers. Um, and they have some good designs on there too that incorporates a lot of different pictures. So if you were to go into a real estate flyer or a marketing flyer, you would see the different um, the different options that there are. So we're gonna go into a marketing flyer. 
Because sometimes what we need is we just need a piece to leave behind with somebody at an event or we're gonna door knock or we're going to have something. And this is a great place to find this information. Um, if anybody has seen my information on fundraising with wine, this is the flyer that I based it off of. So you can see like I use all of these designs. Um, a lot of people use a lot of these designs. If you have designs that you like too, that you're like scrolling through, you can click the little star and save it to your favorites. Um, and that way you can be like, oh, I like this, this, and this. And you can kind of create like your own brand um, and stuff going on as well. But let's say you wanted to use this flyer. You can create this for like a real estate one. You know, this is a real estate flyer, but if you want to hand out some information to real estate agents, you could use this flyer as your basics. Um, and you could be like, hey, why do you want to, why do you want to shop with One Health Wine? Or how can we help you, you know, give back this year? And I do not know why my computer is so slow. It is annoying. Um, let's see, let's see. I'll see if there's any more pictures over here. Thank you, Julie. And Julie has been designing her own flyers and stuff too. I designed a couple for her and did some little stuff, but now she's like taking it on and it's awesome. So I love that. Um, let's see what else do we have up here. Any other questions on the chat? So with a flyer like this, see how there's so many great different little options you can put in here. Um, if you have your own logo, you can put your logo here. This is a great place for a QR code too. You can also make QR codes when you have um, Canva Pro. So if you are going to publish this to a, a website um, or a content planner, when you click the dot, dot, dot over here on the right-hand side, you can see you can download it. You can present this. That's what I did earlier. I just had the presentation in here. I presented direct from Canva. You can share this link. You can present and record. You can be in Canva and record your presentation. Uh, copy this email. You can um, share it to a Facebook group, share it to a Facebook page, share it to an Instagram business. So if I wanted to share this directly to my Facebook page, I would go in here and pick, do I want to share it with my One Hope Wine account? Do I want to share it with my other account? I can write my context. That would be the beginning of my Facebook post right here. You click on the calendar and you can be like, oh yeah, what do I want? Do I want to do it on this day? Do I want to do it on that day? Um, you know, you can set your time in the future. So that's awesome to schedule that as well. And then you click done and it'll post when you want it to. Now, the one thing when you are doing that is that you, if you're posting this on the 28th and now it's the 8th and you're like, oh, I want to go in and change something. You have to reschedule your post through Canva though um, because it won't let you edit or add another page or anything on that page. Um, let's see here too. I think it would be fun if everybody who was on here designed um, a Valentine's Day post sharing what your favorite wine is um, just on a post. Pick any post that you want um, and do a, like a picture of it or something and drop it down in um, CE image sharing and be like, hey, I created this for Valentine's Day. Um, and that way we can get a couple different little things going on um, in the group too for like Valentine's Day posts. I know a few people have asked for that. So it'd be fun to show your creativity um, and find something. Do like a Facebook post. And again, you can come in here and type Valentine's. And you can make it something like, oh, you know, wine is always my Valentine. Um, use your creativity, see what's in here for Valentine's Day, do something that's easy, that's a quick drop and drag, um, put in like your favorite wine and make sure you have like your information in on your post um, and then share with us all in the 
CE image sharing page, I'll do like a, a main post that says, show us your, your Valentine's Day creations and you guys can drop it, your creation down in there and the template link. So if people wanna use it and create theirs, they can use your design too. How does that sound? And we have plenty of time to do that because Valentine's Day isn't until February. So you have, you have the whole month of January to do that actually. <laughs> so that's good. Awesome. Um, so for those of you, let's see, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, so for anybody that, um, wants some other information or anything, please feel free to let me know. Um, I am happy to help you out the best that I can and share information with you and help you, um, excel and go forward, uh, with anything that has to do with graphics or, or even helping you with your one-home business in any way that I can. We're all here as a team together. And I just dropped my little Canva link in there if you wanted to upgrade to Canva Pro. And again, that wasn't the purpose of this, but it, it turned out to be, <laughs> and, it, and it literally is like, it's a game changer clearly because I'm like, oh my God, I'm so stuck doing this other stuff that I, I can't help it. <laughs> so 